My name is Sheree, Sheree Robin. I'm originally from Philadelphia. Essentially, I'm a writer. Um, that's something that I've always done, always been passionate about, and I've always had a love for language and word manipulation. And um, I'm an author, and amongst other things. So I didn't choose it. <laughs> Writing chose me. For me, it all came from an experience when I was eight years old. And I fell in love with poetry. And I fell in love with this poem by Nikki Giovanni called Eagle Tripping. And I was a latchkey, so I had to catch the bus home by myself. And I would um, always take a book to read. And it was during like Black History Month, and I was in the, the third grade, I remember it. And I got this book of poetry, and I stumbled on this poem, and it tripped me out. I couldn't believe that someone had used words that way. That she was able to like paint all this imagery and evoke these emotions and challenge me to think differently in a poem. It, for me, it kind of chose me. And at that point, I was like, oh, there's no turning back from, from here. I want to be a writer. I would say it, depend, it means, it makes me think about the story. It makes me think about a message. Um, my inspiration for writing when I was younger differs from why I wrote my first novel. Um, so my inspiration at that point was really, uh, really therapeutic. It was really for me to get out what I wanted to, to say, to express myself. My friends knew that I was a writer, so I, it, my inspiration was at six period. My girlfriends were at the door like, yo, where's chapter six? So that was kind of my inspiration at that point. But then, um, you know, later on, after I decided that I wanted to write my first novel, I had been editing for a long time and I've been an avid reader. And um, I couldn't relate to myself in urban fiction. And I kept feeling like I was reading about the same characters who had the same hangups. And, and there was nothing touchable or tangible for Sheree, who had a college degree, to reach out and see in urban fiction. Um, and Toni Morrison has this quote that if there's, if there's a book that you want to read and it hasn't been written yet, write it. So I took the charge and I decided to write my first novel. So my inspiration for that came from, for me, the lack of being able to have a relatable female character um, in urban fiction. Absolutely. Um, I think that for me, my responsibility, it, it goes beyond just an engaging story. Um, I love the language, so my responsibility is to, to write um, effectively, efficiently, to, to, to be a good writer, not just good at giving you a story because anyone can tell you a good story. So um, in, in every creative element, there is an exchange between creator and the person who is consuming the creation. So I do believe that, that I have the responsibility to make sure I'm giving good a good story, but making sure that my words are effective, making sure my imagery is sharp and clear, making sure I, you know, I change the way that certain things are structured so that I, you know, get better at my craft as well. Um, I write for, for the people who want to read and for myself. So there is an exchange. I don't think that you can do one without the other.
um, read a hundred books and write one is, is the saying that, that my, one of my professors says all the time. So you, you couldn't possibly want to write a book if you don't read them. Um, you, you can't understand how different words are used or, you know, different ways to structure your sentences if you don't read and open yourself up to a whole host of words and, and books that are out there. Um, so I like to, I'm an, a nerd. I'm going to probably always be in school. I'll be finished my master's degree shortly, um, but I'm going to go back to my PhD because for me, different literature, different things that I read then structure the way that I write or give me a different approach to something I could try or figure out in my writing. So you have to be a reader um, in order to be a good writer. It's essential. The, the category urban fiction pretty much defines the stories that are based within our communities, that are reflective of our ideals, our responsibilities, our lives um, within this said community. The bigger names that came into play before urban fiction, those dealt with writing as a black American in America as a bigger picture. Urban fiction brought it to a more narrow perspective where the stories are right here into what happens in our homes and in our daily lives. So I think it's a really good thing. I love urban fiction. Um, I think that sometimes the only thing is that it, it remains narrow. It remains only to be this, or it can only limit us to this drug dealer. It can only put us in the stripper category. Um, it doesn't allow people to see the world or see themselves in a bigger picture. So that is often why um, I challenge people in their writing to dig deeper to go outside of their comfort zone because urban fiction it can have some limitations if you let it doesn't mean there's not good urban fiction because there's great urban fiction um, but I think that sometimes people put it in such a box and I hate the box and the simple answer is yes you should be able to write about anything um, absolutely anything that you can get your hands on experience is a, is a great teacher of course and you have that to go back to but then there's research there are people you know I'm sure that JK Rollins had never been 
you know, into those places that she quite that she describes so eloquently. So of course, you write about something that you don't know. Um, that's a challenge for a writer, uh, and you have every opportunity to do man or woman. Um, so, yeah, I think that you should. So the current book that that's out now is Candace Rain, and it was published with Simon and Schuster last year. It was a great book. Um, we sold out. My first three prints sold out completely. It went immediately to Simon & Schuster's bestsellers list. So that was a huge, huge, big deal for me. Um, I am currently working on the sequel, trying to get that finished. It's called Prince's Homecoming. So that is uh, my passion project. That's what I'm working on because I love it and I'm in contract. <laughs> so I need to get that done as quickly as possible. Um, but also, in addition, um, I have t taken my editor skills and developed um, what I was doing just as, ed as editing into a bigger company is called Good Ground Literary Services where I, th I am traveling around and helping entrepreneurs um, write books and there's a big difference between people who write fiction and nonfiction. and so I'm using my skills my education and my experience to teach people how to write write well write effectively um, so I have quite a few clients on, on my roster right now um, we're actually getting ready for an event that I'm hosting it's called the Urban Author Academy so I'm going to bring my um, my producer, not my producer, but Zane, who is my publisher, I'm going to bring Zane in, um, Victoria Christopher Murray, Karen Equinonis Miller, Quan. We're going to bring in some really big players in the fiction industry to teach fiction writers how to write their stories and get them out and to publish their stories. So for me, I'm working within my passion and my purpose and trying to do so much in the industry, but to put a stamp on, on the industry, the literary field, um, because it's what I really love to do. So I'm kind of all over the place. So it went sort of like, um, because I take writing seriously, so I didn't just write a book. I wrote a book, I went through a writer's group, I, I dedicated hours and hours and every Tuesday for like a year to getting my book fine-tuned and honed and sharpening my skills. Um, everything that I had been doing for everybody else, I focused it on myself and I got this book done and I started to shop it around. And I kept getting rejections. And I kept getting rejections from people who didn't look anything like me and I realized that I was sending it to the wrong people and I needed to get it into the hands of someone who was going to do with it what I needed the, this book to do so I went to Walmart and I'm always in every book section every store and I went to Walmart and I started looking at the books that are in the African American literature section the urban fiction section and I'm pulling the books down and everyone is going back to Zane there's so much stuff out from Zane I was like you know what let me get my book to Zane so having put in the work because Trust me, this did not just start with, I wrote a book and that was easy. I mean, I put in the work. I have carried boxes and books and, and been an assistant and done the, you know, the dirty work for some people in the industry. So I was able to get my manuscript to her secretary, secretary, to some person. And I got the regular old, if you don't hear back from us in six months, you have a nice life. And I was like, okay, well, I guess that is what that is, but I can't wait six months. So I had this finished book. I'm going. I'm going to go and I'm going to self-publish my book. So I started the process. I went and got everything done, the cover. Um, I got the, the photo for the back. I was on the back with my hair blown in the wind like Beyonce. I was ready to go. And the book was scheduled to be released in January. December 13th, I got an email from the acquisitions editor at um, Zane's, underneath Zane's Public Company. And Zane is a subsidiary for Simon & Schuster. So from the, from um, Charmaine and they were interested in Candace Rain. And at first I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. I did all this work. Oh my gosh, this is not even cool. What am I? Like, so I was really torn as to how, you know, do I now just forget what they're offering. I mean, forget everything that I've done and just let them do what they, you know, as a publisher do what they're going to do. And I couldn't figure it out. And in the conversation, she asked me, what, what was I working on next? And I'm, you know, well, I'm working on the sequel. She goes, well, tell me about it. And I go, well, yeah, because then Prince do this and such and such. She says, okay, well, we'll offer you um, a, a two-book deal right here today. And I said, well, you go ahead and send that in the mail because at that point, that's all I've ever asked for. And when I believed God that I was going to be a writer, I knew that that's what I wanted the deal. So at that point, it was like, okay, well, you just answer my, my prayers right here. There's, there's nothing even else to discuss. Absolutely. Um, with those characters, yes. With my projects, yes. Um, <laughs> yes, absolutely. There's a lot that goes on with my character, with Candace being a single mom. You know, her son is 10 in the first book and Prince is homecoming. Um, he's, he's 14. So she deals with him trying to keep him from, you know, being a statistic and, and making sure that he's safe and making good decisions. And in the sequel to the book, his father um, is incarcerated through the entire first novel. So there's a, a, a struggle with, with black men and parenthood and what those responsibilities are, even when you're not present. So for me, it was a 
much bigger picture and now I get to to bring into light what it is for for a single mother who has a teenage son to date what is that like so um and how do you juggle that and does that take you out of the running from professional single men who don't have children are you no longer a candidate so you know these are questions that um that come up with my character that are bigger than just that's a boo um, so I have a program as eight modules that I teach people the process. Prior to getting the deal with Simon & Schuster, I understood what was required of a self-published author. And taking that into um, working with a, the PR uh, people from, from Simon & Schuster helped me to push myself as well. So I didn't rely on them. And what I've learned is even with the, the big deal behind me, yeah, it's a big deal, it's a big name, it's wonderful. Um, I still have to grind and I still have to work and I still sell books out my trunk and I'm still hustling. And I, so it doesn't stop um, just because Simon & Schuster gave me the stamp. Great, that validated the fact that I'm a, I'm a damn good writer. Thank you and I appreciate that. Um, but that doesn't, that for me was the, it was the highlight of my life at that moment. But moving forward, so much more has come into the picture and I teach those things to people when I work with them to understand um, who you're writing for. You know, I wrote fiction when I'm talking to people who want to write fiction. We talk differently about story structure and setting and pacing and time, things like that. But when I talk to pe people who write nonfiction entrepreneurs, we talk about your story, your target audience, who are you writing for? And then there's a whole series of steps that you have to follow to self-publish, to promote yourself, your press releases, who are you in contact with? Do you have your, your bio ready? Is your picture, you know, are you ready? If someone says, I want to have you come on this thing, do you have your photo? You know, I went to do an event and I was doing it with some other authors and they all sent me their photos and they were all pictures like selfies. I can't use these. I need professional photo photos for you so that we can you know, move forward if you're trying to establish yourself as a professional. And what I say to people um, really is, if you're serious about it, stop treating it like a hobby. If you want to make a living from your writing, from your gifts, from your talent, then you have to take it seriously. Invest in yourself, invest your time, um, invest in the right equipment, you know, get yourself a coach, I coach. Um, writers, but get yourself a business coach, you know, whatever it is that you need to do and take it seriously and start to really invest in yourself um, because it is possible to do without the major labels. Everywhere books are sold. <laughs> in all seriousness, it is available um, everywhere. You can purchase it from me, autographed copies from Um but it is on sale at um, some Walmarts. You have to find it in certain stores, but it's available at Walmart, Target, Barnes & Noble, um, and then you can order it from all of those online retailers as well. Well, I'm all things Sheree Robin. So you can find me everywhere, Facebook, Sheree Robin, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I hate periscoping, so I've never periscoped, but um, I'll get better one day, I promise. But Facebook Live, um, I do that as, you know, as often as I can. But yeah, everything Sheree Robin. Slaughter, the Executive Director of Literacy University. Real Education TV. We will tackle sensitive issues plaguing public education. This groundbreaking show celebrates real learning, real education, teachers in the trenches, and real results. Our viewers will be riveted by our discussions with administrators and students in the middle, making decisions. By tackling sensitive subjects, we will eat the elephant in the room one bite at a time. Red, Real Education TV. Indicator, enough said on that. Yo, what's up? You know what it is. It's your man, the indicator. Holla. Holla. Tone in, man.